All right, so we've got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and get going. The first thing we want to do is head over to the Direwolf GitHub so that we can copy that code and go ahead and get this built. So once you get to this page, and guys, I'll leave links to every one of these websites down in the description below. Once you're on the Direwolf GitHub site, you're gonna click on this code button right here. Make sure you've got HTTPS selected, and then we're just going to click here to copy that code. Now let's go ahead and open up the terminal window. In the terminal, Let's run git space clone space, and then we're just going to paste in that code that we just copied. Give that just a second, and it will clone Direwolf onto your hard drive. Once the clone is done, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Next, we are going to install a few dependencies. So that's sudo apt install hyphen y liba sound2 hyphen dev space cmake space lib udev hyphen dev. Double check your spelling. Once you've got it correct, go ahead and press return. Now that we have the dependencies, let's go ahead and list out that directory with the ls command and you'll see that we've got direwolf. Let's go ahead and move into the direwolf directory with cd space direwolf. Now that we're inside the direwolf directory, we need a new directory to work with. So we're going to run mkdir build. And what that does is that just creates a new directory called build inside the direwolf directory. Let's go ahead and move into that new directory with cd space build. Now we can start compiling direwolf with cmake space dot dot. And go ahead and press return and give that a few minutes. Once that finishes up, we're going to run make space hyphen j space 4. Go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of minutes to do its thing. Once that finishes up, we can run sudo space make space install. The next command we want to run is going to be make space install hyphen conf. And that will install our configuration file for us. Now let's go ahead and configure Direwolf before we move on. So we'll do cd space and hit return. That puts us back to our main directory. So if we list that out, you should now see the direwolf.comp file. We're going to go ahead and edit that with nano space direwolf.conf. Go ahead and press return. And let's start scrolling down this file. The first change we need to make is the a device line here. So we'll remove the pound sign in front of it. And we need to know what our sound card number is. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. I'm going to open a new tab in the terminal by pressing Control, Shift, and T on the keyboard. Make sure your radio is connected and powered on. And then we're going to run a record space hyphen L. And you can see in this case, we have card one, device zero. So let's go ahead and head back over to the other tab where we have the direwolf.com file open. And we can leave that line as is. Plug HW colon one comma zero. Let's continue scrolling down the line until we find my call, no call. We're going to take out the no call and use your call sign here. And let's continue scrolling down just a bit further. Let's verify that modem 1200 is white right here and doesn't have a pound sign in front of it. Continue scrolling down until you get to the PTT section. Now, depending on what radio and what sound card uh, you're using in your particular setup, this can vary. If you're feeding your PTT through FL rig like we've been doing with this setup so far, we want to enter a new line here. We're going to say PTT space rig space two space localhost colon 4532. And that just tells Direwolf to use FL rig for its PTT. Once we've got everything the way we want it, let's press Control S to save it and Control X to get out. Now, if we want to run a quick test to see if everything is working, we can run Direwolf space hyphen P and go ahead and press return. And you'll see in this case that I get an error right here 
uh, Hemlib rig open error. The reason I got that, I'm going to press Control C to stop this. And the reason I got that is because I didn't have FL rig open. So I'm going to go ahead and open FL rig. And we'll kind of move that over to the side and close that little extra box there. And the other thing we need to do for this test is go ahead and start rig control D in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and run RIG CTL space, whoop, RIG CTL D space hyphen M space four. Go ahead and press return. And that's just going to sit there while we run the direwolf check. So let's jump to another tab and go ahead and run that direwolf command again. So direwolf space hyphen P. And you'll see this time everything looks good with no errors. To get out of this, press control C. That will stop direwolf from running. And then in the original window where you ran the rig control D command, we'll go ahead and press control C again. Now let's tackle AX25. We'll start by running sudo apt install space hyphen y space ax25 hyphen tools space ax25 hyphen apps. Once you make sure you've got that in there and spelled correctly, go ahead and press return. Now I do see a couple of warnings on the screen, but I don't think that's going to be anything to worry about. Let's go ahead and set up our AX25 ports. So we'll do sudo space nano space forward slash etc AX25 AX ports. Go ahead and press return. We're going to scroll to the bottom of this file and we're going to type this information WL2K space your call sign. So in my case, KM4ACK space 1200 space 255 space 7 space winlink. We'll go ahead and press control S to save it and control X to escape. And that'll take care of installing AX25. Now that we have everything for 2 meter and 440 taken care of, let's go ahead and tackle the HF stuff. We're going to head over to John Wiseman's website so that we can grab the RDOP modem. Scroll down this page until you find RDOP C64. Now there's two different ones here. Uh, there's an underscore 64 and there's a plain uh, RDOP C64. I'm going to get the one without the underscore in it and you'll notice it has a later date on it, April 9th of 2022. So let's go ahead and click on that one to download that file. And we can go ahead and minimize the browser. Let's move into our downloads directory with CD space downloads. We'll list out that directory and you can see the R.C modem right here. We need to make that executable first, so we'll run chmod plus x space R.C64. Go ahead and press return. If we run the ls command again, you'll now see that that file is in green indicating that it's executable. Next, we need to copy that to the correct directory. So let's do that with sudo space cp space rdopc64 space forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash bin. And go ahead and press return. And that will move it to the user local bin directory. Now we should be able to type where is rdopc64 and it should tell us that it's in the user local bin directory, and it does. So that takes care of RDOP. Next, let's go ahead and get Vara installed. Head back to your web browser, and this time we're going to head over to one of my GitHub pages. And again, guys, remember, I'll leave links to everything down in the description below. Uh, let's scroll down this until we find Vara on Debian. Let's go ahead and click on that, and then next, be sure you click the raw button right here. Once you've clicked that raw button, you should have just a plain text page. We're going to come up here to the very top and we're going to copy that address. I'll use control C on the keyboard to copy that. And let's head back over to the terminal window. I'm still inside the downloads directory. So I'm going to type wget space and paste in that link that we just copied. Go ahead and press return. Once that finishes up, we'll clear that screen and list out that directory. You'll see that new script right here. We're going to run that by using bash space 
Vara hyphen own hyphen Debian. Go ahead and press return and give this a few minutes to do its thing. Now you may notice some errors as this script runs. It typically is not anything to be concerned with. Sooner or later you should get this screen here that says welcome to the Vara FM setup wizard. Once you get here, let's go ahead and press next. You'll have to accept the agreement and continue with next. We can click next here. We don't need a desktop icon, so let's skip that and press next one more time and then install. Only takes a couple of seconds for that to install and it'll tell you that it has been successful. We can say OK and we're going to uncheck launch my program and click finish. As soon as it goes through its next loop, it's going to give you the Vara setup wizard. So we just finished up Vara FM, same thing for Vara. We'll click next, accept, next, 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 and install. It should tell us that ha that has happened successfully. So let's go ahead and click OK and let's uncheck the launch my program icon. Go ahead and press finish. Once that finishes up, let's see if the modems will open. So go ahead and press your Windows key on the keyboard and start typing Vara. You should have two entries, Vara and Vara FM. Let's check Vara first. And while we're in here, we'll go ahead and set this one up. So click settings. Uh, if you've got a registration key, you'll enter that under Vara setup. For now, I'm just going to skip right down to the sound card. And I'm going to choose my USB audio codec for both the input and the output. Once you've got that selected, go ahead and press close. And we can close the Vara HF modem. Let's go ahead and do the same thing this time with the Vara FM modem. Again, under settings and sound card, I'm going to choose the audio codec for both the input and the output. We'll go ahead and press close here, and that should take care of that one. We can go ahead and close the Vara FM modem. All right, so you've made it through the hard part. The next thing we need to do is get PAT and PAT menu installed. We'll tackle PAT first, on the Pat Winlink GitHub page, we want to scroll down until we find this amd64.deb file. Let's go ahead and click on that to start the download. Once that finishes, we can minimize the browser and head back to the terminal. Let's run the ls command. I'm in the downloads directory. If you're not, you can run cd space tilde forward slash downloads. Run the ls command and you should see the PAT 0.13.1 as of the time of this recording, that's the latest one. You should see that file. So let's run sudo space dpkg space hyphen i and give it that full file name. Once you've got that entered, go ahead and press return. Give that just a couple of seconds to install. Now, real quick, we're going to go ahead and get a basic configuration done for PAT. So let's type pat configure. And under my call, right between the quotation marks, I'm going to enter my call sign. And in the next line, you would enter your WinLink password. Let's press Control S to get out of this and Control X to escape. We can go ahead and start pat as a service by running sudo systemctl start pat at and right here, you need to put your username. In this case, my username is KM4ACK. So I'll put KM4ACK as my username. That starts it. Now let's enable that to start in the background at boot by running sudo systemctl enable pat at KM4ACK. Go ahead and press return. Now pat will start every time we boot our machine. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to download Pat Menu and get it installed and configured. So we'll head over to my GitHub for Pat Menu 2. Right here at the green button, we want to click on that, make sure HTTPS is selected, and click this little box there to copy that code. Back to the terminal, let's, let's do a CD and return. That puts us in our home directory. Now let's run git clone 
and then we're going to paste in that link that we just copied. Go ahead and press return and give it just a couple of seconds to clone that repository. Once we've got the repository cloned, let's go ahead and move into that directory with cd space patmenu2. Now we need to make sure that we are on the right branch of code. So let's run git checkout space x86 hyphen dev. Go ahead and press return. Now that, co that command right there may change in the future. So check down in the description below. And if it changes or when it changes, I will put an updated command down in the description so you can follow it in the future. But right now, this is a development piece of code that we're working on, so this is the correct branch to be on. Now, before we can start pat, we do need to install yad. So let's run sudo space apt install hyphen y yad, y-a-d, and go ahead and press return. Now, let's go ahead and get a shortcut made so we don't have to come to the command line to start patmenu. So, inside the patmenu2 directory, we're going to type nano space patmenu2.desktop. Go ahead and press return. Inside this file, we only need to make one change, and that is right here where you're on the execute line. It says home forward slash pi. We're going to change that to whatever your username is. So in my case, km4ack, and we'll actually need to do that again on the next line down, so km4ack. We can press control S to save this and control X to get out. Now we just need to copy that file to the correct location. To do that, we'll run sudo cp space patmenu2.desktop forward slash usr forward slash local forward slash share forward slash applications. Go ahead and press return. And it may ask you for your password, so give it that if it does, and that should take care of it. Now, let's press the Windows key and let's type pat menu, and you should see an entry for it right there. Now, if we click on that, it should open pat menu for us. Let's head over into our settings, current config settings, and we'll go ahead and give it our call sign at the top, and we'll tell it rig control yes. Let's click update down at the bottom. We're going to head back to the main menu. And now we need to get the pat menu config file for pat winlink. So the easiest way to do that is to click on manage pat winlink and choose repair pat config. We'll give it some basic information here. Once you've got this filled out with your actual password instead of just using password here, go ahead and click repair the config file. That'll download the latest config file for pat menu to work with pat from my GitHub repository. It'll tell you that the config file has been repaired and we can just click OK. Now let's go ahead and give Vora a quick test. So in the start stop modem screen, I'm going to click on start modem Vara beta. And guys, this is experimental code. So if you do run into a problem uh, with Pat Menu, put it over in the forum and we'll see if we can help you get it straightened out or at least get the bug fixed in Pat Menu. After a couple of seconds, everything should load up correctly and you should be inside your PAT mailbox. I'm going to go ahead and try a quick connection, although I'm on a dummy load, so all I'm really checking is making sure that everything is working as far as rig control for the radio, so it will change to the correct frequency and PTT the radio as expected. So we'll just scroll down here and grab this first one off the list. The box went green, telling me that the radio changed to the correct frequency, and I can see that on the radio. And next, we're going to go ahead and click the connect and see if the radio PTT works as expected. And it looks like everything is working as we expect it to.